Willie D. Live. You wake up feeling yourself sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pause like every day. Yeah. You know, you know, when you get in the ring, you can't get in the ring thinking you're going to lose. Right. There's a confidence you have to have when you know you got to fight. And, you know, I'm a person that chooses to do things that come with a fight. Yeah. So every day I have to wake up and be like, I got to get ready to fight. So that makes that means I have to give myself affirmations and make sure I'm 100% confident. So, yeah, I definitely give myself compliments all day. I saw the interview that you did with Shannon Sharp, and Shannon kept trying to back you up against a wall about entrepreneurship, ownership. Mm. Y'all were talking about owning football teams, the NFL teams specifically. And Shannon said, well, what about the people that don't want to own? And you said something that was so prophetic to me. You said, they don't have to, but I'm going to fight for them and make sure they don't get abused. God damn, bro. Dude. Mm -hmm. Man, that was heavy. That, that actually sent chills through my body because mm -hmm. I feel it. I feel your love for our people, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. You know, we look at our culture like our family. So... Yeah. If you see someone in your family being abused, even especially if they're being abused by someone else in your family, you know, it concerns you and yeah. you feel that pain. Or if you see someone in your family getting bullied, you almost look at it like they're not respecting you. Mm, you know? Right, right. So I, I kind of take it personal. That's the fuel for my fight yeah. because I know I'm going to be all right, you know, but a lot of times, the things that I want to accomplish require people to dream bigger and to think different. So I don't think people don't know how to dream. I just think they forgot. So I just try to be like, you know, if you don't think about or visualize actually doing something, if you can't see it, it's not going to happen. If you can't see the W, it's going to be an L. Right. You know, so just trying to change mentality and trying to get collectives of people to come together means you almost have to fight for them to wake up. But once they do, they're usually in the right trajectory, you know? How frustrating is that for you to try to convey that type of uh, spirit to our people, to many of our people? I know a lot of us do get it. But some of us, it seems to me that we're always waiting on a leader. We're waiting on somebody else to start it off when the leadership starts within. Mm. How, how frustrating is that to you? To like when, and, and especially when people, when you tell people how you feel or what you're thinking, and they try to project their trepidation on you. Like, well, I have boundaries. My boundaries are if you're not dreaming. I know that it's a trigger for me. So if you're trying to kill my dreams because you won't fight for yours, it offends me. But trying to coach people or help people that are protecting people that are hurting them and fighting me for helping them, yeah, I mean, I'm human. And it becomes almost, I had to learn not to take it personal, almost like it's a human algorithm that people just generally do. The overcompensation so they don't have to work. You know, because when you have a dream, it comes with a fight. You know, every war comes with battles. Life is a war. And it's a war that we need to win. And it takes years to win it. And it doesn't happen overnight. I don't know any one person on the planet that doesn't have problems or something they have to deal with. The test is how you deal with it. Right. So, again, if I'm going to be fighting, I don't want no petty problems. I'm not a petty guy. I expect big problems, you know? So when they come, I'm not bothered because I know it comes with the game and it's always the darkest before the dawn. But, you know, I watch people react to things the same way time and time again and with the same result. So it's like, how could you keep reacting the same way and you don't like the result? How do you expect a different result if you keep reacting the same way? You have to do something different. So wherever you're at right now, Unless you do something different, you're going to stay exactly where you are. Whether you like where you're at or you don't, there will be no different result unless there's a different action before it. Mm. So this repetitive 
um, excuse and entitlement not to work or especially people that don't work on weekends and holidays. I hate that. I'm like, what, what do you want a weekend from? A life you hate? I would not stop working until I love my life. You know what I'm saying? Or I was just talking about, like, we're programmed to only go on holidays a couple of times a year. And when they tell us to, you know, even like July 4th is the funniest day to me. Independence Day. And I'm living Independence Life. <laughs> so I, there's only going to be one day a year that I'm not independent. And I'm going to be independent every other year. So you what, work what, for somebody observance? every year. <laughs> it's, it's a special, special Independence Day. I mean, yeah, special ed, Independence Day, you know, but it ain't my Independence Day. It, it's almost like life and there's certain things that just I just observe that don't make sense. Like, if it's illegal to drive drunk, why is there a parking lot in a bar? Mm. That doesn't make sense. It's mm. a trap. You know what I mean? But why is the world set up like this? Mm. It is obvious. It's like, well, just because someone does something and sets it up doesn't mean it's right if it don't make sense. Yeah, you hit a home run on that structural work ethic because I used to do my podcast six days a week and I would take off on Sundays. And I realized one day that I ain't really doing nothing more important on these Sundays. Like, I got the energy, I got the will. And you enjoy it. Why am I not doing this thing seven days a week? I mean, I like to do it. I like doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, when you think about McDonald's, McDonald's didn't say, okay, we're number one now, so we're going to close on the weekend. They said, no, we're going to open on the weekends. In fact, we're not going to close at 10 o'clock. We're going to close at midnight. And then they <laughs> decided we're going to have some 24-hour McDonald's open. And, and, so and, they just keep pushing. And no block I ever hustled on closed on Sundays. Right. We was clicking every day, all day. Right. So, you know, again... There's a control factor as well. So, you know, you're told when to collectively go on vacation. So you actually go on vacation with a bunch of people you was at work with. How is that a vacation? It's just being around a bunch of people in a different environment. Right. You, you know, that's why I don't like going on vacation when everyone goes on vacation. I got to see everybody. Right. It's more of a business thing for me. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's exactly that. If, if, if you love what you do and there's no rules that come with them, you're going to work when you feel. And if you like what you do, you, you'll do it all day long. If it's your dream, why would you not do it and do it till you're the best at it? So the trick is to figure out what you love to do and make that your profession. But we're trained to do things we don't like. It starts with school. You know, you're trained to sit behind a desk for eight hours a day while the sun is up in dim light with walls that look like jail and hospital walls. And... You're supposed to get used to that and then pay to do it again when you get out of school to get back in college. Then pay it off by sitting behind a desk and doing exactly what they trained you to do. And no one that's teaching you business is a millionaire. No one that's teaching you about music has a hit record. It doesn't make sense. So I got kids in college that listen. And, you know, I say this. They, my son listens to his professor more than me about business. He goes to school for business. I'm like, y y your professor ever made a million dollars? Who pays your professor? So why are you listening to him before me? You know what I mean? Why are you in a school and not mine? I never saw school on any hieroglyphic. Have you? <laughs> Absolutely oh, I never saw school in any pyramid or any of that. I think parents are supposed to teach their kids. But you're trained to give your child away to an adult you don't know, to teach your kid how to survive in life. And they're not surviving the way you were. That's why when I was in school, I was like, yo, I'm 16 with a better car than you. Why would I listen to you? Even though I might have had them for the wrong reasons in that moment, there was nothing that person was doing or had that I wanted. There was no knowledge they can give me. Like, I work with the OSG. That's um, a couple of hundred black principals and or principals from economically challenged places. And what they tell me and what I've learned, a couple of things. Number one... If your reading scores are low, you go into jail. That's the metrics. That's, that's the algorithm, you know? Number two, if you give a kid love, but you don't teach them how to survive or how to read, you're hurting them. Number three, a kid can only retain 45 minutes of an eight-hour day anyway, so their class should only be 15 minutes. 
So the rest of the stuff they give you was a distraction, the things you don't need to know. A kid is on his phone all day. So why wouldn't you put school on the phone, on demand, 15-minute classes, and have it done by a person that inspires them? Because you might not want them inspired. Why would you waste eight hours of a day? Really, it's a babysitter, you know? That's what school is used for for most parents. But why do parents mostly have to take care or, or put their kids in school? Because they got to go to work. So it's all to divide. I go to the kids' school, I mean, the kids' prisons in Chicago, right? I go to this prison, or I, it's a kids' school in a prison, no windows, no outdoor space. As soon as they get there, they're drugging them up. It's called the cut program. And it's the line item is therapy. They tell you the more drugs you take, the quicker you can go home. I'm, I'm going through the jail. I'm seeing all of this. And I'm asking the superintendent, because the principal's the one that put me on. And I'm like, uh, what's their, they keep talking about de-escalation. I'm like, but what's their reading scores? Fourth grade. You know the recidivate rate will be 100% then. Fourth grade, but you're going to put them back in the street addicted to a drug. The only time they can get it back is they get back in the jail with no education. After you just mentally abuse them and kept them breathing recycled air, they don't get to go outside. You know, no therapy. The only therapy they had was white women in there. Walking around with jackets around their waist, all in a group. How can a white woman talk to a kid with a body without being scared of judging them? And how could a therapist not know that? So I'm like, well, why are you doing this? Oh, I know why you're doing it. Why you don't even have a black woman or... Why is there a man in here to teach these kids how to be men? Because it's a cycle to get them used to coming back. Now, the worst part about it is for every kid that's in that jail, $1.2 million a kid. And the kid can't even afford to get a toothbrush. They don't get none of that money. So it's a private sector jail. People are getting paid to destroy our children like a commodity so they become adults that go to an adult prison. And that's the cycle. And that's what has to change. And we can't wait for somebody to change it. We got to change it ourselves. Because why would they change it? <laughs> it's working for them. We have become a commodity so that people could skim on us over a jail bed. The more we go to jail, the richer somebody individually gets. If you own a hotel, your job is to have people return. A jail ain't nothing but a hotel with bars on it that's funded by or paid for by the government. So your intention is to have them come back. While you're in jail, you're not allowed to make no money. How could you take somebody off the street for 10 years, they can't make no money, you don't educate them on how things are currently going and put them back on the street knowing without an education, you're going back. 80% of people that go... To, uh, that leave the jail, that don't have a place to go, they come back. So these things are things we all know. We know how to fix them, but we don't. So that seems intentional. So I'm not going to let the person who's hired to torture my culture, I'm not going to depend on him to change things. I'm going to torture him, and I'm going to change things. And I'm going to leverage my celebrity so that I can bring awareness to the things that matter and the people that are fighting. So the OSG, those are the principals. Those should be the celebrities. The principal that's in that jail every day, because I walk in there and I'm in there for an hour, I walk out sad, girls be with me crying, and we need therapy. They doing that every day.